Well, greetings, Titans. I'm Dave. This is Dave Takes It On. We're just in a little bit of rain. Ah, we can handle that. Uh, but we've come out today to have a look at the uh, charging infrastructure with so many people telling me there's not enough chargers out there. They're always having to queue up. So we've come out deliberately and we started off this morning at one of the busiest superchargers that I know of in the area. That's Burton Wood on the M62. And you can pretty much guarantee every time you go there, there are going to be queues there so we could talk to people about that and we could look at the charging etiquette. So we came out to Burtonwood and it was empty. We literally arrived. One car was parked there. I've never gone there before and found it that empty. Uh, but while we were there, uh, we found it got a little bit busier and cars were coming in and out. And this is one of the main things you find with Tesla superchargers. Cars don't hang about. Most people don't run their cars down to empty and they don't stay here to 100%. So you find there's a very high turnover of cars. So when we were down at Burton Wood, we thought, well, we can't make a film on what you do to, uh, for queuing if the charging is totally full because there was one car there. Uh, but we spoke to him and we're going to be doing a video on uh, that because that was almost the sister of my car. Come back onto that another time. Uh, but we did some uh, time-lapse photography down there. We've not done that before. Uh, and that shows that we were there for a while, but it shows you how the chargers work. Uh, we compress sort of half an hour, an hour's time there into just about a one minute video and we can show you what it's like. And the simple fact is that video is really educational to us. Us, it shows us there's a massive turnover of the cars. They hang, they typically are in there 10, 15, 20 minutes. That's it, gone. Uh, I know Teslas are fairly fast to charge, but also they don't hang about trying, trying to charge up to 100%. It's not how you work on a road trip. So uh, following our failure down there to, uh, to uh, be able to video and record cues, uh, we thought come to the next busiest one, which is Charnock Richards. And this is on the M6 on the way north. And um, it's raining, there are no cars. <laughs> oh yes, our plans totally scuppered. Uh, but unfortunately, we haven't been able to get the video that we wanted, but fortunately, this actually answers the question that most of our viewers are asking me. Are there enough charges out there? What do you do if they're full? We've come out to two of what we believe in the area are the busiest chargers out there. And uh, at Burton Wood, at one point, they got up to nine cars there. There was just one vacant bay. Uh, and then when we left, it was back down, I think, to either one or two cars still there. Uh, the time lapse will show which it is. But we got there, one car, in and out, in and out, half an hour later, and there were two cars left. And this is what you find. So we come here to confirm it. There are 12 charges here. These are the V2s. You can tell the V2 because they got both of the sockets. They've got the Tesla proprietary socket, which uh, I use. Uh, all Model S and Model X cars use this one. That's it, they're the only cars that use this one. Uh, the Model 3 and the Model Y can use these, but I have to use these because that's the only socket I've got on my car. All cars from the Model 3 onwards uh, were typical uh, classic uh, CCS2. Uh, so from then on, uh, all Tesla cars have this socket and so they use this one. On my car, I actually have an adapter uh, some of you will see me using it from time to time and it turns the CCS2 into the Tesla one. So if I go to a grid servo, as I've just been to an Apple Green, which is CCS2, I can now still use that. Uh, so I can use any Tesla supercharger and any CCS2 two charger. Uh, all the newer ones uh, can always use CCS2 and all the chargers now pretty much are CCS2 apart from uh, Chadamo. Unfortunately, there's still a lot of Nissan Leafs about and they are going out of fashion. So the reality is, and I've said this in several videos and people still don't believe me, the reality is that we do have enough chargers. There is probably already enough charging in the UK at a rapid and ultra rapid level to sustain the EVs that are in the country, certainly at the moment and certainly for the near future. Now, let me tell you something else that people don't understand. Uh, my car's over there, uh, Tesla Model S. Um, I never charge here. 
no, I tell a lie. When I first bought it, before my home charger arrived, I did charge here a couple of times. It was the only way I had of charging. I had a three kilowatt uh, plug-in one, which does charge it, but it only adds about three or four miles overnight. And I was doing quite a lot of mileage back then. So I had to use a, a uh, ultra rapid charger. So I charged here a couple of times. Because I only live about five miles up the road, I never charge here anymore. So I will never ever fill this one up, be a, a part of a queue or part of a, uh, a rush in, in charges here. And this is what most people don't understand. They might see 12 charges and go, oh yeah, but they're selling, I don't know, half a million what cars a year, whatever the figure is, uh, where are they all gonna go? Well, 90% of them will never come here. Even if you live down south, you never come here because if you live down south, you might come up once or twice a year and on those occasions, you might have to use this. But if your destination has charging, which a lot of them do these days, you wouldn't use these anyhow. You'd wait till you get your to destination. So it's really a case of we need to use the chargers a lot better. And one of the things that we really need to do is make sure that we put in whatever electricity we need. Not what you think you should have or not top it up to the, to the top if that's what you need. You see, if I was uh, heading home and I was, I don't know, 50 or 60 miles from home and my battery was heading down to near flat, so many people have got this petrol filling mentality. Oh, I'll pull in, I'll fill it up. And they sit there for 30, 40, 50 minutes filling the car up at 40p or 70p, whatever the rate is. And yet, Half an hour up the road is your house where you can top it up for 7p. So um, I'll, I'll try and put this up as, a, as an overlay. If you look at my Tesla usage of superchargers, you'll see dozens of two, three, four minute stops. That's it. So if I'm heading home and my car tells me uh, you're gonna be 30 miles short, I will stop and put 30 miles worth of petrol, of, um, <laughs> petrol of uh, electricity in it and that might entail a three four or five minute stop and go through my history and you'll see countless examples of three minutes here seven minutes there four minutes here literally just enough to get me home I do that for two reasons one three minutes charging oh, I haven't even got time to have a pee in that time um, that's why some of them go to seven minutes I have to walk across have a pee often pick up a coffee by the time i get back it's six seven minutes um, quicker than petrol by the way um, so uh, that's the first thing is just do what you need i don't wait around for my car to fill up the second thing is even at tesla prices these at the moment will be somewhere in the 30 to 40 pence range um, that's cheap compared to Instavolt 85p, uh, GridServe 79p. Uh, oh, by the way, GridServe, the 10% deal ends at the end of this month. We're waiting to hear what's gonna happen on that. Um, if you want to subscribe, uh, we'll notify you when we do release videos, and that will be one of the videos we will we'll be releasing in the future. Sorry, uh, to go back. Um, so the first reason is I don't wanna spend time sitting at a supercharger. So three, four, five, six, seven minutes, absolutely fine for me. Just enough time, go to the toilet, pick up a coffee, coffee and on my way again. Second thing is, if it's 30 or 40p, once I get home, I can plug it in at 7p. That's a quarter of the price. And so I often arrive home, and again, I'll try and find some overlays for this and see if we can um, actually show this. I have arrived home with three or four miles left. That's it. The car has told me it can make it home. I believe it. Uh, and uh, I've got home and I've had three, four, five, six miles range left showing on the car. Get all sorts of warnings, say if you leave your car overnight and it goes cold, your battery will be flat in the morning, all this sort of thing. But of course I don't, because when you get home with three, four, five miles left on the, uh, in the range, uh, first thing you do when you get home, plug it in, set your timer for the uh, off-peak period, and then go to bed and don't worry about it. So I might get home at six o'clock in the evening, plug it in with Octopus, and they have their own timer. I don't need to set it on the car. At 11.30, uh, or whenever they decide, they will switch the charger on, uh, and my car will charge. And when I wake up in the morning, uh, eight o'clock, um, I don't care how long it takes. Someone says, you know, it takes seven hours to charge your car. Yeah, but I'm fast asleep. 
So that's the way I work. So what I see at these Tesla superchargers is this really quick turnover. Some of the people at um, Burton Wood were not there more than 10 or 15 minutes. So it's probably for them the same thing. Just park your car, plug it in while you're parked, nip into the services, go to the toilet, grab a sandwich or a coffee. And by the time you get out, you've probably, they, they could add something like 100, 150 miles in that time. And that's enough maybe to get you to your next charging stop or to your next, your final destination. So for anyone who's worried about uh, superchargers or any chargers being full, uh, I've got two messages for you. I don't find that. I have never queued. Uh, I think it's now two years I've never queued to have a charge. I see queues occasionally because I go there to film them deliberately, but I've never queued. The second thing is, even when these places get really busy, there are peak times when they are busy. And I liken it to a supermarket on a Friday night, five o'clock on a Friday. If I go to my local Tesco, there's no parking spaces. All the trolleys have gone, there's queues at the tills, and so I don't go at five o'clock. I wait till later, and I find that six o'clock, seven o'clock, it's empty. So think really, try and avoid peak time, only charge as much as you want, and there's plenty of charges for everyone. So thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, please click the like button. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe. Thanks very much, I'm Dave.